Hello everyone! Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this far along into my Zelda work log series. I'm sorry this video has been a little bit delayed, but as you know, Katsukan happened and I had other priorities to take care of ahead of time. In this final part, we are going to be covering making Zelda's skirt as well as her center belt tabard loincloth. That's what I usually call it, a loincloth, even though it's not actually one. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the video. I hope you guys enjoy. In classic fashion, I don't actually have a lot of footage of when I first made the skirt, but I used the same base pattern that I did for the top, which as you can see already has the sort of contrasting center panel. Okay, so apologies in advance, I actually didn't get to take really any footage when I was first making this, so I'm just gonna have to explain the things I changed from the pattern. Um, in terms of like construction, the biggest thing I did was I had to add a waistband, and normally it's like a like lace-up back that would extend up to like the like torso area, but I just did like a side zipper. That's pretty small, right over there. Um, uh, and I did my appliques pretty much the same way I do all of my appliques. Um, the only thing I did that's like a little bit different is that um, for this like, I said like butterfly area right here, um, the way I did this was that um, these are not like this exact shape. They're a little bit larger so that I could um, obviously have them like sort of sandwiched in between the gold and the blue when I fused it down. The white, um, okay, well it looks really gross and wrinkled because it was like put away for a little while, but um, in the original design she has like really strong like sunburst pleats, but I was like losing my mind trying to do that. Um, and Honestly, if you were going to make this, I would suggest doing the white part as a whole separate skirt underneath and then having the blue as like a separate piece. Um, but I did not do that because I didn't have enough white fabric, um, even though I did end up using quite a lot of it. So basically I just did like a slight gather at the top. So it is a little bit more full um, than the original pattern, but still it's pretty decent. So honestly, the part of this costume that made me lose my mind the most was having to satin stitch all of the triangle details that are on the bottom hem of her skirt. As you can barely see here, there kind of is like a puffed in and out look to them. And I thought I could achieve this by using batting and then cutting away at the centers of the triangles, but it ended up not really showing up and I quickly decided not to use it so I wouldn't waste that much batting. So when it came to attaching this onto my skirt, I basically did a concealed top stitch by turning it up and then doing one long line so that when you fold it over, the seam is completely hidden. And in the end, the gold piece gets folded under the hem of the blue skirt that I had already made. So for making the hanging tabard piece, I basically measured out the total length that I wanted it to be and then divided up each section, sort of figuring out the ratios between all of the different parts and as you can see here I transferred my original paper design onto a piece of batting that was going to be sandwiched in between two layers of satin. And the basic concept is that the center batting piece is slightly smaller all the way around so that the pieces of satin will hang off the edge and fully encase the batting in between. So once I had all of the design drawn on I pinned it to the satin. And then I went ahead and satin stitched like a crazy person. I did all of the center details first, working my way out to avoid any bumps. One thing I should mention is that obviously I was laying it the batting side up so that I could see the lines that I had drawn. So it's actually going to be the bobbin thread that when I flip it around is going to have the design imprinted and going to be the right side of the fabric. This again is quite time consuming because of all the individual sections that you have to go through and like start and stop the satin stitching. But overall, it's not too difficult. And I do think in this of time, the batting actually did make an effect in making it look more puffy and thick. So when attaching the back piece, I basically only satin stitch around the contours of all the leaf shapes to completely conceal the batting that is in between. When it comes to making the actual belt piece, I actually did sew it as like a full tube with a layer of batting in between so there wouldn't be the raw edges on either side. I completely sewed on one side of the tabard to the belt and then the other side I have sew on velcro that I attached in. 
And in both cases where I was sewing, I would just sew over top of the satin stitching I already had done so that it would blend in with the pattern and, you know, not make a new, like, really noticeable seam. And now we are finally at the end of my Zelda build. I'm really happy with how she turned out, and I was really happy being able to wear her at Katsu. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!